but today we'll be talking about Lisp in Python. Okay. So just a quick review from last week where we went over for loops. So for loops are when are used to repeat the same action over and over and over. So you can use it for rows in the data set, for items in a list, and for characters in a string. And so the basic logic going through a for loop is for something in an iterable thing, you're able to do something. So for example, if we had a list right here of numbers, we would say for item or sometimes for iterable in list, you could print I. So yeah, but today we'll be going over list. I've briefly mentioned it, but today I'm going to show you how to index into list or um, how to index into list and how to edit list as well. So lists are the most basic type of data structure in Python. And each element of a list is assigned a number called an index. And so the first element always starts as being counting as zero, not one. So if we go back over here, um, in here, you would think it would be counted as one, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera. When really, when it comes to Python instead, you would, if you wanted to call seven specifically, it will be considered, you start at zero, one, two, three, four, five. So even though there's six items in here, it always starts off at being counted zero instead of one. So that's very important in Python because if you do, let's just say, refer to one instead of refer here. So sometimes if you're doing a certain function um, or when working with data, if you need a specific set of data or a specific piece of data, it could also mess up your numbers if you're doing analysis. So today I'm just going to show you everything through a live code because I feel like that would be the easiest to see like what we're doing. Um, I'll show you the live code notebook. I'll share the live code notebook afterwards. Um, it will be shared after through um, the email list from Kingo. So in a list, you could have strings, you could also have integers, and you could have floats. Um, so the way that you create a list is you just have square brackets and they're all separated by a comma. And so if you wanted to index in or to call or to see a certain value or element inside of a list, one way to do it, if you just wanted to print it out, you do print parentheses list one, then you use square brackets and you put in whatever index it would have. So let's just say, for example, in list one, I wanted to call chemistry. Chemistry has an index of two, or sorry, chemistry has an index of one. So I would say print. So I'll put in one, and it would print out chemistry. Same thing if I wanted to go into list two and I wanted to print out the number five. So here, list two would have an index of zero, one, two, three, four. So you go to four, print, and that's how you do it. So let's just say in list three, if I wanted to print out the letter B, what index would it have? Anyone know? One. Exactly. So when you print it out, sorry, it would have, it would print out, oh, sorry, I put sick of list two. When you print it out, it would print B. So there's also a way you could um, subtract numbers. You could also assign certain, and oh, sorry, let me start off with this. You could also assign certain values or a variable to an index. So let's just say I wanted um, 
item B. Let's just say I wanted item B, so you could assign it to list three in the index. So that'll be one. And if I say print item B, it will print out as B. Um, also, if you have integers in a list, you could use this if you wanted to subtract or do some type of operation. So let's just say I change this item to and item A will put as list two, four, yeah. So if I wanted to run those, or sorry, item A. So you could also do print item B, item A minus item B. And you also get the results. So that's very good to know when you are doing data. Um, you could also split list if you wanted to. Um, what's the exact syntax for this? I mean, I think for that, I'll probably focus on later on, like if you want to read up more, but I don't think we'll be covering that for much of that. You could also append data to a list. So what append means is just adding on. So let's just say if I wanted to add on a certain value to a list without having to go back and change it physically, if I wanted to say, um, let's just say I wanted to have result equals item B minus item A, then I could also do list two that append result or item A. So now if I say print list two, it'll add on that number. Anyone have any questions? Anything confusing or anything needs clarification? Oh, also, you don't need semicolons at the end. That that was from um, old notation of Python. But yeah. Okay. So then I want someone to walk me through an example. So let's just say, if I wanted to add 1997 in list one to 2000 in list one, how would I do that? Anyone would know the answer, how to add 1997 to 2000 in list one by indexing into the list. Oh, Victor, you're muted. Uh, you would do Print, 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 list one, two, list one, two, list one, and then in the back and in, in the, the brackets, one, in the square brackets, um, I don't know. Um, Nineteen ninety seven and two thousand. 
two. So how would you count it out? Zero, one, two, right? Yes. And then two. And I'm adding them together. Yes, plus, plus list one, three. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. And if I wanted to add the result of this back into list one, how would I do this? I think you should do with list one dot list one and dot dot append and then in and then in parentheses the answer. But how would I do the answer if it's only a print statement? Like oh, I can't print this by itself. Oh, I don't know. So you just want me to copy and paste this into there? Yes. Yeah. It will work. But do you know a shorter I way? I don't know a shorter way. All right. So a shorter way to make it easier for append is just the answer, just to assign it to a variable. Oh. That's what I was thinking about. So if you're here and you just put it in example. I did print list one. It's a lot easier to read. OK. Yeah. All right. So I have a couple exercises I'll be sharing. Hold on. Let me just. Pull it up and do this. It usually takes me a little while. You already know this by now. It takes a little while. So um, just give me a few minutes.
Sorry, I copied the wrong thing. Um, here's the link to the Google Collab. All right, and we'll probably regroup around 2.45, but you could just let me know if you're finished before that, all right?
what 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 does the append look like again because i forgot when i was doing exercise one all right um this is what it looks like i'll keep my screen on this okay Uh, it isn't working. It says that I may. 
I made val one equals list one and then square braces. I used square braces. Do I have to put something around the whole, around the meaning of val? All right, hold on. I'll wait until Adam's also finished yet when we're going over it, okay. then I'll look at your code, okay? Okay. I had it, I just forgot to run the one with the list one. It's all right. Yes.
All right, Adam, how far along did you get along? Did you get, sorry. I just did oh, number it? one with a little bit of extras. I was All able right. to do some of one and two. All right, so you want me to go over it? Yeah. All right, so for number one, so to add the first two, All right, so you could do result, you just append in list one plus list one index zero, list one index one plus list one. And then the last two would it be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you would do six plus. I'm not sure if it's just for me, but I can't see your screen. Um, I, oh, sorry, I, I forgot. I, I paused it. Yeah, I you. made it a little bit more complex. I made it into a variable, and then I also made print to learn in the list one. All right. I also print so, the variable and then also print the list. All right. Yes. So then you could do print result. That would be your answer. And then you just do list one dot append result. Okay. So to get the largest number from the list, you just print the largest one you see here. So that would be um, and the largest one, uh, sorry, that would be the sec the second item or this or that has an index of one. So you print and this is a number twelve thousand eight hundred seventy nine, and the, multiply all the values of the list and append it to a li new list. Result. You could do you could index into it. But if you wanted to, you could also um, do a for loop. But I think for now, I'll just show the index just for the sake of like showing the examples of doing index. If you want, um, probably next week, I'll be focusing on more complex problems in Python. We'll be going through it and working through data analysis. But for now, for list three, for, and then result two, one times list three I'm sorry multiplication list three two list three three and you could list three. pause for a moment because I can't catch up all right. Just let me know when you're good, okay? Oh, will you? Could you send me your the your live one? Yeah, I'll send it after. And you can also look over it more after if you have anything you need to correct because this okay. will also have the answer. Could you send could you send the week could you send the week four answers also? Yeah, I will. Yeah. Okay. Please, thank you. Okay. And um remember, I don't know if you know, but you have to email the uh, I gave you the email I believe the link of week two. I can give you the email again if you want it. So you could um like just email it and Kingo will send you all the files from this week, including the PowerPoint. Okay. Um, so I'll drop it in the let me just pull it up. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I'll just drop it in the chat real quick. Office at siteNF.org. So you could just email with the subject line. And email with the subject line. Python notes. And she'll send you the slide deck and also the notebooks and with the notebook answers as well. Um, just for the sake of time, I'll just finish going over it first before I send it. All right. Okay. And then once you have it, you do. So I'll just show you the result real quick. I put a print result too. Is three thousand eight hundred forty, and you just do list three dot append result two, and now if you print list three, it'll show it. You can also do return list three, I believe. Uh, you don't want to do. Never mind. You can't do it. And not in a for loop or variable, but list three. And then number four, write a program to count the number of strings where the string length is two or more and the first and last character are the same from a given, from the given list of strings. All right, so this one is a bit more complicated. This one, you would have to use a for loop. Okay. So, you say for I in list for if len I is a list for I. is greater than print i Okay. Or you could just do an I is greater than two print I. So that's what you say to count the numbers. You would have to do a counter. This is kind of a bad example. I'd rather say just to print it out for now. What is it doing? You know what? I think for now, I'll just edit that example and leave it because I didn't introduce counters yet. is two or more. All right, we'll just keep it at that for now because I haven't introduced counters yet. I forgot. I wanted to introduce more counters and everything next week because it'll take a bit more time to explain. I just did not have enough time to do that today. <laughs> 